goodness to you, we'll ask you to turn to the book of Revelation, chapter 12. Brother Larry was speaking about uh, some things that are reminding me about the last days and uh, how that all is going to uh, be uh, a falling away, and that's what we are probably seeing. And uh, you don't want to uh, you turn on your television anymore. These young kids, they're out there with guns and killing and destroying worse than the old ones. And they're not having any kind of a uh, show of love. They're not having a home that they can be uh, showing the difference between bad and good. They're just on the rampage. And I think uh, that's, that's one of the signs that we can see this morning of, uh, of the last days. And, of course, I know we've been in the last days since Jesus' time. But I think that they're now greater than they ever have been and uh, uh, more, more terror and more of everything going on that's evil and so we uh we just need to stay close to the lord and uh i, I heard uh, uh i believe it was brother roy marcus one time said uh, uh and his mama used to whip him she whipped him with a switch and she said he said i'd get just as close to her as i could because i knew that the, the lick wouldn't be as hard and that's what well, that's that's good advice for us this morning Amen. Uh, when we are trying to serve the Lord, we need to stay just as close as we can to Him because uh, the closer we can get, uh, the better we'll be and the less we'll have to take on our own body. So this morning in, in the book of Revelation, we want to read just a little bit concerning uh, the uh, state of Israel and uh, how that, uh, what he's talking about here in uh, as John writes in, in chapter 12, but with, in verse 1 of the ch chapter 12 of the book of Revelation, he says, And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars, and she being with child, cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a red dirt great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head and his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth and the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born and she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron and her child was caught up to God and to the throne, his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she had a place prepared of God that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. This is, uh, this is talking about Israel. Mm -hmm. And, I, and I, I, I know it's in the last days because the man child that they're talking about here in the in scriptures is Jesus Christ. But the woman is Israel. And I'm sure that there's a lot of people who get this bit kind of confused with the, the birth of Jesus to Mary. But listen, this it's not so. It was Israel. Israel is where the, 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 that they're talking about. He says, And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, or a great sign in heaven. And the woman, which is Israel, clothed with the sun, and of course, the sun showed her magnificence, and the moon that was under her feet showed uh, her beauty and all this. And then, uh, and the moon, and the moon, and, and under her feet and upon her head, a crown of twelve stars, which was the twelve tribes of Israel. Mm -hmm. And so it identifies this woman as Israel, and this is the one that Jesus came to. This is the one that. Jesus established in in his before his time uh, God established th this woman this Israel and we want to read to you just a little bit this morning before we go any further in this so if you would you could turn with me in Genesis uh, 30, I believe it's Genesis 35 32 or 35 we'll look and see Genesis and probably all of you know this story real well, but listen, there may be some out there 
that will see this that have never heard this before and it right. might encourage them and it might uh, uh, let them know what's going on and, and so many people this morning uh, that uh, want to down put, put down Israel but Israel is the is the apple of God's eye amen a, a Israel Israel went against God even in, even in the wilderness when he was leading them around and he, they wouldn't obey God but the thing of it is God has not deserted Israel he is he has set them off to the side and he's letting them be uh, dealt with but listen he's coming back to them amen as sure as this world when this old Gentile age leaves and when we're all caught up to be with the Lord in heaven those that are Gentiles all listen he's going to come back to Israel and and a lot of this this t is talking about here will be when he comes back and he deals with Israel and he's going to deal with Israel for seven years and so we need to understand that they are they're still very important Amen. Uh, and so in and um, uh, let me see here in 30 in in chapter 35 that's where I told you 35 and verse 10 uh, let me see, in, in verse 30 35 and and uh, 24 I, I think that's what I'm at. let me let me get my thoughts together here this morning and see where I'm at uh, in 35 10 and God said unto him that uh, well let's go a little bit before that uh, in verse 9 and God appeared unto Jacob again when he came out of Parandum and blessed him. And God said unto him, Thy name is Jacob. And he had already, uh, over in verse 32, he had, this is where he wrestled with that man all night long. And, 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 and the, he was an angel. But anyway, he wrestled with him all night long. And uh, he, the angel said unto him, turn me loose because daytime comes. And he said, I'll not turn you loose until you bless me. And he asked him, he said, what is your name? And he said, Jacob. And Jacob meant uh, one that is, that is mean, one that is hateful, uh, a sinner, uh, or, or, or things of this nature. He was very, he was a liar and all this because of, of, of his dealings. But anyway, he told him, he said, my name is Jacob. He said, from henceforth, your name is not going to be called Jacob, but it's going to be called Israel. And so here we see here in the, in the reading that we're reading in, and God said unto him, I am God Almighty, be fruitful and multiply a nation and a company of nations shall be of thee, and, and kings shall come out of thy loins. And the land which I gave Abraham and Isaac, to thee I will give it, and to thy seed after thee will I give the land. So we see where Israel comes from, how it got started, and of course, he had already made the promise that it says here to Abraham and them about multiplying our seed and blessing our seed. Well, here, here he gives it to this lineage and starts this lineage, and which is Israel. And so he said here in verse 13, And God went up from him in the place where he talked with him, and Jacob set up a pillow in the place where he talked with him, even a pillow of stone, and he poured a drink offering there, there on and he poured oil thereon, and Jacob called the name of the place where God spake unto him, Bethel, which is house of God. And that's what Bethel means. So we see this is where that this all start, where Israel got its start and everything. And so uh, we want to get back over here now in our lesson again, because I want you to notice something here. In verse one of our in, in the verse one of our lesson here, it says, "And there appeared a great wonder in heaven: a woman clothed in the sun and moon, under her feet and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she, being with child, cried travailing. And this travailing, uh, he's using this as a the the pain of a of a woman giving birth. But this this travailing was a time of of of, of since he." Uh, said this to Jacob listen 
They have been looking for the Messiah. They have been praying about the Messiah. They've been talking about the Messiah, but they never really could understand it. And they were they were anxious to see him. They were always the, he had sent the uh, the uh, witnesses to tell about him, but they hadn't got to see him yet. And so this this is a type of travailing. And this is what he he wanted. And I want to read you something now before I get away from it in Luke uh, 21. Look at Luke 21 and verse uh, 25, 21, 25, yeah. Okay, Luke 21 and verse 25. And there shall be a sign in the sun. Now notice in, in our lesson there, he, he talks about the sun and the moon and the, under our feet and, uh, and all this. But he says here, And there shall be a sign in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth, distress of nations and perplexity, the seas and the waves roaring. This is a type of this where that the woman was travailing. This is a time of pain. This is a time when the world did not really understand the Lord Jesus Christ, even though he had already, he was here upon this earth and he was talking to his disciples and telling them this. And listen, they did not understand really what was going on. But here he's, he's pointing to the nation of Israel and in, in this chapter here, he's speaking about Israel completely because he says, men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the power of heaven shall be shaken. And notice again, these are great things that are happening. You're talking about uh, people uh, enduring pain and suffering and things of this nature. When these things really come to a climax, and that just prior to Jesus coming back, Amen. things are going to be terrible, terrible, terrible. And so before we, before we uh, uh, get too far more in our life, we need to understand this. And those that are not saved need to understand what's going to happen to them because they're going to be left here after the rapture to suffer some of these things. Right. And it's going to be hell on earth. And uh, notice here he says in verse 27, And when ye shall see the Son of Man coming in the cloud with power and great glory, and when these things begin, begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your head, for your redemption draweth nigh. Amen. And he's saying this morning, uh, to me, he's saying it, uh, when we see these things start to happening, and we, we haven't looked up and seen him coming, but we understand that it, uh, in, the, in the scripture of the, of the fig tree, where we're going to read just in a minute, listen, it's a fixing to happen because notice in verse 29 about the parable of the fig tree and talking about Jesus coming back. And he spake unto them a parable, Behold the fig tree and all the trees. When they now shoot forth, you see and know of your own self that summer now draweth nigh at hand. And I want you to notice something this morning, people. We're right now on the verge. We're right now on the verge of spring of the year. Mm -hmm. You go out, and some of these, and I've done done it, and I've gone out and looked, and some of these little bushes, and this temperature, temperature has, has started to leaf out and starting to bud and starting to show signs. Listen, that's what he's saying here. When you see it, when you see these things coming, you know the spring is not far off. And when you see this men's hearts failing them and, and all this stuff going on, you know that the coming of Christ is close by. It's got to be, and and I, and I can't, I mean, I'm not here to tell you, hey, it's going to happen a certain time, but I can say this, it's closer now than it's ever been. Amen. And this morning, we need to understand that we need to have everything uh, in readiness when the Lord comes back, and because listen, He's going to He's going to call us out. Amen. And those that are those that are left standing, they're going to have to go through all of these things here that we're reading about. Notice again in in the in the, in the parable here, in verse thirty-one. So likewise ye, when ye shall see these things come to pass, know ye that the kingdom of God is nigh at hand. Verily I say unto you, this generation 
shall not pass away till all be fulfilled. And the Amen. generation he's talking about is the, na the nation of Israel and that generation that he come and he's coming back to. There's going to be a, a seven years there that he's going to deal with these uh, these people. And this generation is in that, is that night, time span. And he says, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. And all he's doing is telling you this morning, listen, my word is true. And my, man, my word stands forever, and you can depend on this. Watch in, in look in 34 now. And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your heart be overcharged and your suffering or, or, and, and drunkenness. And this is talking about eating and drinking uh, uh, and cares of this life, and so that the day come upon you unaware. And this is one of the times, this is a, hey, what, if, what is the thing now? All kinds of sports, all kinds of activities going on. Uh, they, they, you know, they're making every holiday they can, and then what they don't make a holiday, they excuse people. And they're going out, and they're being entertained right. by the world. And this, to me, is, 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 a, is a, another sign, like the, the, little, the little bushes are starting to leaf out a little bit. This is, is showing to me that it, it is getting closer. Amen. And he says... Here's the, here is the most important thing about this, and he warns us in verse 36, he says, watch. And listen, this morning, you cannot slumber, you cannot sleep in this watch. You need to, when you watch, you watch, and, uh, and you stay alert, and you watch the signs, and you watch everything that's going on, and you, you stay as close to the Lord as you can, because listen, the time's at hand, and it's, and I, and I don't know why, but it's a whole lot closer than it's been. Amen. We need to be prepared for it. So he said, watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. So he's saying here this morning that we can escape these perilous times, this men's hearts failing them and fear and looking after things and coming up on the earth and the powers and all these things that, that we're going to see other countries have and the government have over us and all this. He says, you can escape that. But he says, you've got to know me. You've got to stay close to me. You've got to watch for the time and you've got to pray. And people this morning, we need to pray more Amen. than we do and be sincere about it. And these, uh, these little... Uh, uh, so, Father, forgive me, and, and, and I'm sorry. And I'm, listen, we need to pray. We need to be earnest about this. Amen. Because uh, it's close at hand. And so he said here, and, and I'm going to read this out. And in that day, in, and in the day's time, he was teaching in the temple. And at night, he went out and abode in the mountain that is called the Mount of Olives. And all the people came early in the morning to him and in the temple for to hear him. So he was... He was telling them all these things. Now, back in our lesson again, back in Revelation 12, as we were trying to build up to this this morning, in verse in verse uh, 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 two, they're talking about the travailing, and we've explained that, and the pain, and to be delivered. And so, the delivery is the time when that the woman gives birth to the baby, and the pain stops. Well, that's the same thing we're talking about here this morning in that pain and all this. Listen, we. We are in pain this morning. If, if, if you're truly saved and you're close to the Lord, you're in pain. And, you, and, and the only way that you can get relief from it is go to the Lord. Amen. And ask his blessing. Ask his forgiveness. Because, listen, you woke up this morning and you didn't know what today was going to bring. And uh, you need the hand of God uh, guiding you this morning. You need his blessings on you. You need him, period. And so uh, that we can, uh, this travailing will be not too bad. But anyway, in verse 3, And there appeared another wonder in heaven. And behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head. And, 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 and this, this is the devil. And I want you to notice something here about him this morning, what he did. In verse 4, And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven. This was the angels Amen. that were in heaven that God had created. 
Listen, he deceived those angels. He deceived them and caused them to follow him. And listen, I think that he, he put a lot of pressure on them because he says his tail drew them. Or, and so he, he sort of forced them. But listen, he got them in his clutches and he brought them and he cast them down to this earth where he could use them to uh, uh, hinder us in any of our things that we want to do to serve the Lord. And he says he cast a, a third of them to the earth and the dragon stood before the woman or Israel. And you can bet this morning that if you, you think the devil is working with you, the devil is over there. Right. He's, he's working. He's working every way he can. And listen, God has built a hedge about them and, and, and they're going to be protected. But listen, they're going to have to come back unto the Lord because they're not, they're not serving him. Right. They're just not serving him like they should. And uh, he's having mercy on them and he's protecting them. But we as God's people need to pray for, for Israel that they might be saved because, listen, they're God's. They're God's. Amen. They're God's chosen people. They're, the, as, as David says, they're the apple in his eye and he loves them. But now listen, because he loves them, he's put them away. He's chastised them, just like a, a, a good parent would chastise a child, just like if, if more children this day and time that, that has grown up into this world, if they had two parents that would teach them and chastise them and all, this country wouldn't hear about these 14, 15 Amen. years old going out and blowing a, a, a person's head off, robbing a place, or, or, or cutting people all to pieces and all this. But listen, he's chastised them, but also... He's got a love for them. And we, as mm -hmm. God's people, need to pray for them. And so here, she said here in verse uh, 5, And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule the nations with an iron, with a rod of iron, and her children were caught up unto God and to his throne. And so here we see this Israel brought forth this child, and it was Jesus through Mary, mm -hmm. brought her up, brought him up, and he gave them these words. He gave us uh, an opportunity to understand them by setting those children that uh, he had apart because of disobedience. And he says, hey, I'm going to create, I'm going to call a man by the name of Saul, and he is going to be for the Gentiles and he's going to come and he's going to teach the Gentiles what they need to hear and once they hear and believe and accept Jesus Christ as their Savior they're mine and these over here are Israel they're mine also but they're in a state now of being punished and before too many years uh, that's going to that's going to end because Jesus Christ is going to come back. He's going to call out the Gentiles, uh, and then he's going to be with those children over there, uh, his own children. And uh, uh, Matthew Matthew field Matthew twenty three and twenty four tells a whole lot of things, and 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 it's coming to I'm understanding it more that it's during that time when that they they're going to be uh, there and they're going to be. Uh, fighting the Antichrist and, and the Lord comes back and he's going to uh, help them with these things. And so here we see the woman and, and, and that's, this is Israel in verse 6. And she fled into the wilderness for she has a place prepared of God. Now, uh, there's places in, in, in uh, those lands over there and it fits the description of what will happen here. And Petrus is one of the places where that there used to be uh, 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 dwellings in the caves and in the cliffs. And it's got one little opening. And, and, and I'm, not, I'm not saying this that you can just uh, uh, bet on it or whatever. But it, it, I've heard this one and I've, I've read about it. But there is an opening in this, in this thing that goes back into these, these places. And... Here he says here, and the woman fled into the wilderness where she is, had a place prepared of God that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score years days, and there was uh, there was war in <clears throat> in heaven. Michael and his archangel. I think this is what that. Uh, well, anyway, 
this is the place where this is the place where that they scholars think that they will go and, uh, and in in this thing it says he cast a, a, a river of water in there or a, a, a river of soldiers to try to go in there and to, to wipe out Israel and they were destroyed by this because it was a little narrow open to get in there and and they were protected by this and so here we see uh, uh, the the uh, Antichrist here the devil and in verse uh, uh, seven, and he says, and there was war in heaven. Michael and his archangel fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought in his angels, and prevailed not. Neither was there the place found any more in heaven. But the dragon, great dragon, was cast out. That old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which deceived the whole world, he was cast out into the earth, and his angels was cast out with him. And so this morning. That's what we've got to contend right. with. That's what, that's what the world has got to contend with. They're here for one purpose, and that is to deceive every person that they can and to keep anybody from hearing God's word. That's the reason why that the devil hates God's word so, because this is, this is, the, this is the, the, the power that will reach lost people. This will tell them about their, the, their, their need for the Lord Jesus Christ, and he hates this. He hates the church. He hates anything that stands to tell the people about uh, Jesus Christ. And so he says uh, here, and the great in verse nine, and the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan which devoured, deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels did cast out them with. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven. Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And, and one example of this accusation of this accusing is when uh, Job, right. when Job, when, the, when, when the, the devil was going through and following the earth and he came in where the Christ was at with the others, and he had a conversation with Christ. And uh, Christ asked him, he said, or God asked him, he said, have you tried my servant Job? And uh, he said, I can't, because you've got a fence around me. And so God said, I'll take this fence down, <laughs> and you can try him. You can try, you can do anything you want to, but you can't take his body. You can't take that. And that's that's the thing this morning, people, with with God. He can he can let the devil go just as far as he wants him to go. And when he gets there, that's as far as he can go. Amen. And listen, this morning, sometimes he's aggravating you and I, and listen, you think, well, this is a this is the worst time in the world. But you think upon this thing right here. Listen, God has got control of me. Amen. And you think that you are having rough times, but listen, you just stay true to the Lord, and he, he's got to flee. He can't stay there because God, Amen. God won't let him go any farther. And so he knows when he gets to his end, and you still are serving the Lord, he's wasting his time. And so he, he flees to another person. And so here, here is this, this is, this is he that was cast out into the earth, and his angels, and they, they, they're, they're all over everywhere, and they're, they're just tearing up Jack. But listen, he says, and I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, now has come salvation and strength, and the kingdom of our God, and the power of his Christ. For the accusers of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the Amen. blood of the Lamb. This is our, this is our, this is our only hope this morning. Those that are lost, they have to come by the way of the blood, and they have to feel that the Holy Spirit as it, it urges them, as it talks to them. And listen, if there be one here this morning that, or is hearing me that has had this and is pushing it off and said, no, I'll wait till another time. I, I don't feel right done doing it. Listen, 
You don't need to wait. Amen. And uh, as I read over Horrible Eagle, you watch and you be careful because, listen, the devil is out there as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And so uh, it's, 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 a, it's a serious thing. And I know people, uh, and the Bible teaches us about uh, the chosen of God in, in, in eternity. Listen, that's true. But the thing of it is, we don't know who was chosen. Mm -hmm. And so Amen. this morning, uh, when, when, when we see these things uh, about us, be careful. Pray. And, and, and don't be, don't be as, as bashful. And I'm using that word bashful because uh, I don't know another word. But don't be uh, uh, unconcerned about yourself to the point that you're, you're afraid to go before God. Right. God loves you. Amen. God, God wants to hear from you. And he, he is sitting there on the throne. And Jesus Christ is there beside of him. And Jesus hears your prayer. And he takes it to God. And he gives that prayer to God. And listen, God cannot deny that prayer. Amen. Because Jesus Christ's blood was the one that, that died for the sins of the world. He paid the price. And so he's bringing your, your prayers to God. And you can be assured this morning, if it's a sincere prayer about your soul, that God is hearing it. Amen. And Jesus Christ this morning has brought it to him. And... He is working with you. I, I, I believe that this morning. And he will, he will stir your heart. And he will, and, and don't fight it. Listen, and don't be ashamed to say, hey, I was saved last night as I was going to bed, or I was saved uh, out there in the field, or I was saved anywhere. Amen. So listen, you need, you need to tell others about the Lord Jesus Christ and give him all honor and all glory because he did it all for you. You are nothing. You're no, and I'm not using that in a, a horrible way to, but you're you're nothing to uh, hold back what God has done for you. Amen. You should be you should be a, a, a servant. You should be proud of it because I tell you what, if somebody come out here and says, Hey, I'm gonna give you a thousand dollars you wouldn't walk around with your mouth shut. You know, you'd be like, hey, this guy come by and give me a thousand dollars. Listen, God's in the same, it's the same thing with God. If, if God is working with you, if God has, has saved you and you, nobody don't know, you tell it. Amen. Praise his holy name. Because, listen, he is our father and Jesus Christ is our brother and our savior. And I, we shouldn't be ashamed of many. Anyway. Amen. We should be able to, to stand before people and say, praise the Lord. And uh, I know the Lord. And we should be able to tell others about him. And, and we should have a burden for others. Because, listen, that's, that's what he, he had a burden for us uh, a long time ago when he, when he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to, to be the situation or to be the covering for our sin. He sent him. And uh, so this morning, we, we, we need to be praising the Lord. Lord. Amen. And uh, I, I, I hope that this will encourage you. I hope it will strengthen you because uh, we, like I say, the, the time is not uh, long off. And Amen. the thing of it is, you know, uh, death is around the corner too. Uh, mm -hmm. We won't stay here so long and then we've got to die. And uh, serve him while you can. And uh, we thank you for listening to our lesson and hope that uh, those that are hearing it uh, elsewhere in the world uh, will take heed and listen to that and, and realize that and get your Bible out and study your Bible and these real scriptures that I've read this morning. Why, read them and try to understand them and get somebody to help you. Go to church and get somebody to help you because you need help and you need, if you're, if you're, if you're, if you're wanting to escape, the burning fires of hell this morning. Thank you all so much this morning for your lesson. Amen. Attention.